Hey guys, Spirit of the Lie here. In this video, we're gonna do something a little different and entertain a philosophical or game design question around regional units. Specifically, the question has been raised whether elephant archers and armored elephants, which are currently just for the Indian civilizations, should also be given to the Southeast Asian civs that already have battle elephants. Thematically, this would make them proper elephant civs, and then opens up a related question of whether more civilizations should also get access to the Step Lancer. Now, I'm not passionately arguing the case for making any of these changes, as I leave the design decisions to the professionals. In this case, I just think it's an interesting idea, as you have to think about how existing bonuses would interact with these units, and whether it would suddenly make some civs far too strong, or would it actually make them more balanced. This is simply posing the question, and then committing to it and carrying through with the thought experiment of how it would play out. As a bit of a guide, some ideas here are based on a mod that actually makes some of these changes. So you can be Vietnamese with armored elephants and elephant archers, or Huns with step lancers as a couple of examples. We'll start with the elephant archer, which at the moment is restricted to the three dynasties of India DLC civilizations, the Bengalis, Dravidians, and Gurjars, effectively working as a cavalry archer replacement, as no civ has access to both of those units. Let's begin by giving both to the Vietnamese, as I think they're one of the more interesting examples, adding elephant archer and removing cavalry archer, while also adding the armored elephant and removing the ram line. Thinking about their bonuses, remember first their archery range units have plus 20% HP, and second they have a unique tech giving battle elephants another 100, which could easily be expanded to all elephants, so it includes our two additions. Now having over 400 HP in Castle Age is pretty crazy for the Elephant Archer considering regular ones max out at 300 in Imperial. One compromise might be to make their Archer Range HP bonus apply only to Foot Archers, meaning they max out at 400 instead of 480. We've already seen a similar restriction done for the Britons. Either way, I think they're a better alternative to the Cavalry Archer, which Vietnamese already don't use that often, so identity-wise I like the change. They're still missing Parthian tactics, though have bloodlines, husbandry, and all the blacksmith upgrades, of course on top of very high HP. One concern here is that the rattan archer might be put in a slightly awkward position, as the elephant archer would be good in a similar anti-archer role, given how many arrows it can tank. The counter argument would be the rattan archer is faster, and has significantly more pierce armor plus one more range so it would still have some situations that it's the preferred choice. Of course, if we're opening Chatras to affecting all elephants, you have to think about the Armored Elephant as well. It would have 320 HP in Castle Age and 370 in Imperial, making it very tanky, though the Elite War Elephant, for example, has 620, and remember Celts get plus 40% HP on their Siege, including Siege Ram, so this isn't necessarily unprecedented. For their part, Gurjars also deal 40% more damage and can reduce their food cost, so it's debatable if this even necessarily gives Vietnamese the best siege elephants. It would be a massive upgrade over the current capped ram option they have though, so in practice you'd have to make sure this doesn't make them too good against archer sieves. If they did end up being too strong against archer sieves, there's a couple ways to mitigate that, including denying them the siege elephant upgrade, or you could just revert Chatras to its original plus 50 HP for elephants, given it would now affect three different units. Keep in mind, Vietnamese have some wiggle room with them, as they're a bottom 10 sieve on open and closed maps, and I also think this would help reinforce their identity as the ultimate arrow tanking elephant sieve. Moving on to the next Southeast Asian sieve, we have the Burmese, who have a bonus for their battle elephants, giving them plus one, plus one armor, and then another plus one, plus one after the unique tech Howda. At the moment, this stacks on top of the Battle Elephant's regular armor upgrades, making them very tanky. But what would happen if we changed this to all elephants and gave them the two new additions? Starting with the Elephant Archer, remember Burmese lack the final two Archer armor upgrades. So even after the bonus, Unique Tech, and Parthian Tactics, they only end up with one extra Pierce armor. They also miss Thumb Ring, so overall they might be kind of average, and probably wouldn't see a lot of use, similar to how rare it is to see Burmese making cavalry archers at the moment. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Burmese players just ignored elephant archers in most cases, as they're a civ pushed toward their unique unit, battle elephants, and infantry, which is totally fine for me, as you don't necessarily need to radically change every civ. Likewise, even armored elephants getting more armor is probably not that big of a deal, and just makes them a little more resilient to being rushed down by villagers, etc. Remember, they start with negative two melee armor, so the Burmese enhancements just negate that, but there's still a ton of bonus damage they take from spearline units, camels, and siege. Again, I think it would be a pretty natural feeling change, especially given they're an official elephant civilization after all, though overall I wouldn't expect it to be as impactful for the Civ as it was for Vietnamese. 
Next up for the Khmer, their big bonus is that their elephants move 10% faster, though they also have the unique tech Tusk Swords, giving plus 3 attack that could be given to the armored elephant pretty easily. Starting with their elephant archers, much like Burmese, they're missing Thumbring but have Parthian tactics, so their damage output isn't that high, but their armor actually ends up being pretty reasonable. The plus 10% speed I think would be a nice improvement, on top of husbandry, and would make them probably fun to play, with their extra mobility as just a bit of flavor, without making them necessarily overpowered. At the same time, arguably there's actually a bit of overlap with the Ballista Elephant, which is almost like a combination of the Elephant Archer and Armored Elephant already. The Ballista Elephant is obviously ranged like the Elephant Archer and can fill a similar sort of role, but also has a surprising anti-building element against buildings without masonry. Especially adding the Elephant Archer as comparable might require tweaking the stats or bonuses of the Ballista Elephant to give it more specific situations that it's better or worse. Or you could just leave it with the pass-through damage it does being the thing that makes it the better choice in at least some situations. The biggest thing would just be trying to avoid making the Elephant Archer or Ballista Elephant objectively superior to the other in all cases. Again, like the last two civilizations, I don't think Khmer would really miss Cavalry Archer, and again thematically it would be a very reasonable change, as remember technically they are another Elephant Sith. Interestingly, the Armored Elephant would also be a balance swap or arguably even a slight nerf, as they currently have the Siege Ram, which at least when it comes to damage output against buildings is the superior unit. This is where having Tusk Swords affect Armored Elephants could come in and would be a fun experiment to partly make up for that, though you'd have to see how balanced that ends up being, especially against sieves without Halberdier. And finally, moving on to the last Southeast Asian Elephant sieve, we have the Malay. This would make for another interesting experiment, or one you'd have to be careful of with their 30% and 40% elephant discounts. Just looking at them, the new prices on Elephant Archer and Armored Elephants seem awfully low compared to generic sieves. The way that's handled in the Battle Elephants case at the moment is with terrible armor upgrades, making them the pinnacle of quantity over quality. Obviously that same cap wouldn't apply to the Elephant Archer, as Malay get all of the Archer armor techs. On the face of it, this might be kind of broken, though theoretically one way to handle it would be to not give them elite elephant archers, which already mirrors the fact they're currently missing heavy cavalry archer. This would be on top of already lacking bloodlines and Parthian tactics, which together would at least provide a cap on how strong they could get. If anything, the larger concern might actually be the armored or siege elephant being brought down by up to 40%, though you could again pull a similar trick and not give them the siege elephant to at least hold back their late game. Personally, I don't love the trick of missing an Imperial upgrade being used twice, though also keep in mind Malay are a bottom 5 sieve by win rate, so even if you did make them better at the archery range or siege workshop, it wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing. Malay are already a quantity over quality sieve with Karambit warriors and discounted battle elephants, though less known for that sort of thing than Gots, so maybe this would just help solidify the reputation and their identity. Again, the fact they're performing so poorly at the moment makes me much more open to this idea than I would if they seemed balanced or already quite strong. Now, of course, Elephant Archers are currently a bit of a niche unit, and I think that's part of the idea behind this, to make them still a technically regional unit for South and East Asia, but replacing some rarely used Cavalry Archers. Before we finish, I want to dive into a related, but maybe even more radical idea, expanding the number of civilizations who have access to Step Lancers. Currently, the list is comprised of Cumans, Mongols, and Tatars, and especially giving them to Mongols at least opens up the question of whether or not to give them to other historically deserving nomadic or semi-nomadic cultures. The exact list that that should contain could be debated, but going back to the mod that I mentioned, it includes Huns, Turks, Bulgarians, and Magyars, so let's talk about those ones in particular. In this case, the Huns would be able to produce them 20% faster from their stables, giving them another unnecessarily good Castle Age rating option. While historically it makes sense, I think power-wise you're probably boosting one of the sieves that needs it the least. While I wouldn't necessarily write it off entirely, and you always have to see how these things would balance in practice, personally I think Turks are much more interesting. Now right away when you hear Turks, you might think of modern Turkey and Istanbul, but my understanding is that Seljuk Turks are thought to have come out of Central Asia and were a nomadic steppe people, with good light cavalry and cavalry archers in AoE2 to reflect that. So steppe lancers historically feel pretty appropriate here. Mongols already give the precedent of sharing light cavalry and step lancer upgrades, so here it would make sense for the Turks light cavalry lines plus one pierce armor to apply to step lancers, and maybe even give them free elite step lancer upgrade to mirror their free light cavalry and hazar. What I really like about this in terms of game balance is it would give Turks a nice castle age rating option, and make them a lot more interesting during a period of the game that they're generally kind of bland. 
Maybe free Elite Step Lancer on top of Instant Chemistry in Imperial would be too much of a power spike, but personally I'd be in favour of trying it out. Next up for the Bulgarians, presumably their Step Lancers would be affected by Stirrups, as it affects Light Cavalry along with Knights and Connex. Now 33% faster attacking Step Lancers sounds a little snowbally, but so does 33% faster attacking Knights and Cavaliers for that matter, though performance wise Bulgarians have been a pretty average civilization. Historically, the Bulgars were another semi-nomadic people thought to have migrated from Central Asia, so again, historically, it's totally justifiable. Likewise, Magyars are in a similar vein, with semi-nomadic roots fitting the Step Lancer theme. Here, we'd expect them to get the Light Cavalry discount applied to Step Lancers for a bit of flavor and have the free blacksmith attack upgrades, making them a really nice raiding option in Castle Age. Of course, the Corvinian Army Tech currently reduces the 10 gold cost of the Magyar Hazar, and could be expanded to reduce the Step Lancer's gold cost by the same 10, so it would cost 20 gold instead of 30. That could be one way to make them a more appealing option compared to Light Cavalry and their unique unit, and at least visually I think it would be a very nice addition to their roster. Now as I said off the top, I really went into this as just a fun thought experiment, and not necessarily overhauls that I'm passionately calling for. The main thing is with Step Lancers especially, I feel like it's such a cool unit that it's sad to see it only given to three civilizations. I'd be curious to hear what some of you guys think, and if this all sounds like it would add some fun flavor to the game, or just lead to a ton of imbalance, and is just too radical on the face of it. That'll do it for this one though, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.